Well, hello everyone. Welcome to The Path TV. We're Philip and Laura Baker, and as always, good to be able to spend some time with you. A great marriage. It's not a destination. It's a journey. It's a path. And again, man, we just appreciate wherever you are in the world, uh, kind of walking this path with us. And, uh, you know, that's what the show's all about, is just every episode. Let's get a little further along the path. And maybe if you're out there and... Um, you know, maybe your marriage has gotten off the path. Maybe it's stuck on the side of the road. Uh, maybe we can get you back on that path and get you moving forward. Uh, life's too short uh, not to have a great marriage and really right. enjoy one another. That's right. And uh, we, we, we just appreciate you joining us. And hey, wherever you are, man, we'd love to hear from you. You know, this, this, this show goes out all over the world and streaming in so many different countries. We would love to hear from you. And so, uh, hey, during this episode, you'll see our email there at the bottom. Reach out and uh, email us, and man, we'll write you back. And hey, if you're, uh, if you're new to The Path TV, uh, hey, it's okay. All the episodes, all the episodes are on our YouTube channel. Just go to PBM Phillips Space Baker. That information will be at the bottom uh, during this episode. And go over there and subscribe to our channel. Make sure and hit that bell. And every time a new episode drops, uh, you'll get a notification, and you can catch up on some things. Something and worth so, binging. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah, come on. Binge something that makes you better. Um, and so all that's on our YouTube channel. Hey, today we want to, uh, we want to start like a, a, a two-part series, and we want to talk about the art of arguing. The art of arguing. You know, uh, that is something that if you've been married five minutes, you know, if you've been married uh, a couple of seconds, you know, there's going to be arguments in a marriage. And we want to we talk about some things today. And I think it's going to be interesting and it's going to help you, um, you know, to do some things in a way that makes you better, not makes you worse, right? Absolutely. Practical. Every marriage has disagreements. Every, every couple. I mean, you've got a man and a woman who are trying to cohabitate. Uh, men and women, if you've, um, you know, if you've been married very long, you've, you've figured out real quick, we're very different. Mm -hmm. Very, very different. Every marriage has arguments, has disagreements, has somebody hurts your feelings, somebody says something wrong, somebody does something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a sign of a bad marriage. Absolutely not. You're gonna have disagreements, you're gonna have arguments. The sign, when, you, when you're in trouble, the sign of the, is when you can't have a resolution. Yeah. And so we want to talk about some real practical stuff. I mean, we might get in a fight right here. Come you know, ooh, you know, so you can show you how it's done. But we want to talk about some very practical things because it's a part of marriage. And you know, as we've talked to couples throughout the years, I've noticed that people either get into one ditch or the other. They either don't don't want to talk about arguing. Oh no, we don't argue. No, 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 no. We're good. We don't avoid, argue. We don't, avoid, avoid, you know. deflect. Yes. Ignore. 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 And then stuff just simmers. Yeah. It just builds mm -hmm. until finally, you know, it, there's an explosion. There's an explosion, and then you know, then you're dealing with the repercussions of that for however long. Or you have the other ditch, and all they talk about is that they argue all the time, all the time. We just fight. We fight. We fight. We fight. We fight. The reason they do that is because there's no resolution. Mm -hmm. There's no solution. There's no, there's no forgiveness. There's no I'm sorry. There's none of that. And you've got couples that, you know, that are in either ditch, but the reality is you've got to get to the middle. You've got to find them. I mean, you're going to have disagreements. You're going to have arguments. You're going to have uh, times when you just, you know, you just fight. You have arguments and you fight. But the reality is you've got to find a way to, to navigate that in a healthy situation. Yeah. in a healthy way and that's what we want to talk about we want right. to talk about some real practical ways to do that um, yeah so we're not you're not arguing over the same things for decades yeah you know it's like uh, there's some there's some arguments that people have that they might as well just do this they just might as well go stop stop where's the recorder right where's the recorder okay uh, let's just instead of arguing let's just replay the argument we had three Last months week, ago yeah. <laughs> Uh, because nothing has changed. You still think this is what you think. I still think the way I think. And so why go through all the emotional energy? Just hit play and uh, let's play the last argument that we had and we'll save ourselves a bunch of energy. Absolutely. And so we're going under the assumption, 
in these next two episodes, we're going under the assumption that you want to be the best wife you can be, or you want to be the best husband you can be, that you want to have a marriage where there is unity, where there is peace, where there is love, where there is resolution, that you are, you are wanting to be everything that God has called you as a couple to be. Mm -hmm. And going on that assumption, then we're going to talk about how to do that and how yeah. to have conflict and how to resolve it. So There we go. So uh, th the dynamic for this episode is, uh, I wrote this, I said, a great marriage knows how to argue and knows how not to argue. And uh, both of those things are important. And so maybe we can give you a few things to think about today that, uh, that, that'll help you do both. Um, I wanted to read to you Ephesians 4. Uh, verse 25, let's just read a few of these scriptures. These, this is just so powerful. Ephesians 4, verse 30, 25. Wherefore, putting away uh, lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor or his spouse. Come on. For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither, neither give place to the devil. And I think there's a way that... Um, we can argue or we can have a discussion that doesn't, uh, that doesn't, you know, give place to the enemy that makes us better instead of arguing in a way that does give place to the devil and we wind up more separated uh, after the argument than we were before the argument. And so, hey, the word is, the word is powerful and uh, we, want, we want to stand on this word um, move, moving forward. Amen? <coughs> so, um, here's the first thought you know, that we want to talk about when it comes to arguing. And it's really one of the most important rules when it comes to arguing. And if you'll obey this one and if you'll stick to it, man, good things will always happen. Number one is this, always talk issues. Absolutely. You're going to have issues in a relationship. Um, the issues are, they can be simple, they can be complex, but you're going to have issues. And if you can stay on the issues, if you can stay on what you're really, you know, and not rabbit trail. And that's what most couples do is they, they get on, they start on the issues and then they start rabbit trailing. And he'll talk more about that in a little bit. But staying on the issues, talking about what is actually really going on. And, you know, one of the things that you've got to be able to do as a couple is because, like I said, we're, we're assuming that everyone is trying to be the best version of their self spouse. And in doing that, you have to give the other person the opportunity to complain. Right. I mean, there, there are times that you just, they, you've got something going on, you've done something to me, and I just, I need to let you know. Mm -hmm. and, and as a couple, you've got to allow that person to complain without fear of repercussions. See, what happens a lot of time is if you go and you talk, and as long as you're talking issues, you should be okay. Yeah. Um, that, that I go and tell you, listen, I, I have an issue that this happened. You did this. You did this. This is how it made me feel. And issues can be from, come on, issues is, you know, one issue could be, you know, your underwear are on the floor. Right. You know, you don't, you don't close a cabinet. You don't put the toilet seat down. You know, you don't clean up after yourself. I mean, you know, the pillows are messed up on the couch. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's all that level of issues in, in a house. But then, you know, then, then the, you start raising the stakes a little bit. You know, and you start having issues about about your sex life and this and this and that, and you have issues about finances and right. someone so someone is spending, someone is saving, someone went and bought something and didn't and didn't say anything up to anybody. You got all this money stuff, and then you got children. Yes. You know, and some someone you know was a little more mad than you should have gotten mad, or you said something you shouldn't have said. You got children, you got finances. You got sex. Sometimes it can be spiritual things, yeah. you know, concerning church or concerning, you know, ministry or, I mean, the issue, there's just a thousand different issues all on a scale of one to ten. And if you can stick to the issues, you know, you're always, you're always going to do better. So, you know, the first thing is you do, you've got to allow them to complain. And there's a difference in complaining and criticizing. And that's why, and Philip's going to talk a little bit about the criticizing. <clears throat> criticizing is when you attack the person. So we're back to the issues. You know, we're, you're, you're allowing them to complain. You're allowing them to voice their, their feelings. Now, when you voice your feelings to your spouse, it doesn't mean that it's fact. It doesn't mean that it's even true. 
it means that's how you feel. That's mm -hmm. how a situation made you feel. That's how something you said made me feel, how something you did made me feel. Right. And it's important that I am able to tell you because it, I, I may have completely misinterpreted something you did right. or something you said, or you may not have realized what you said hurt my feelings. You know, when Philip and I were first, and I don't even know where we got this from, but when we were first married, I remember saying something to him, or he said something to me, and I, I probably sold up. I mean, I, you know, probably got really, you know, quiet, and, and he looked at me, and I, I don't even know where it came from, but he said, I guess that was a big thump. And I was like, what? And he said, well, you know, sometimes you, you know, you say something and it's like a little pebble that you throw in a pond. It doesn't make a big ripple. He said, but sometimes you like throw a big boulder in a, in a, a pond and it goes, thump. and it just ripples, ripples, ripples. And he said, was what I said, he goes, was that a big thump? And from then on, we kind of had a joke, yeah. you know. Thump. You know, he'd say something. I'd say I'd, something and she'd go, thump. thump. you know. <laughs> and that's, that's just what, and I don't even know where we got that. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah, really. But we... He, we understood, and he understood. I just know when I'd hear thump, I'd go, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that it was something bigger to me than just a little pebble. Yeah. And so you have to be able to complain yeah. without fear of repercussions. And, you know, what happens, and let me talk just for a moment about those repercussions, because a lot of times when you try to have a conversation and a person gets defensive, it pretty much shuts the conversation down. Um, and being defensive, when, when you're trying to talk to someone and they're defensive, what, defensive, what they're actually saying is, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to talk about it. This is not on me. This is on you. This is not my problem. This is your problem. This is something you need to deal with. Um, I'm not dealing with it. I'm not talking about it. I'm not addressing it. That's being defensive. That's when you're in a very, very tight, hard situation in your marriage because when that defensiveness comes in, then you're more concerned about being right than you are resolving the situation. Remember, we want to go back to resolution. You've got to resolve the situation so that you can move forward. Yeah. But when you are defensive and he's defensive and you're defensive and, and you've got all that going on, you're not really caring about what's best for the other person. You're just wanting to be right. Right. You're just caring about how it made you feel. And you're not taking that person into consideration at all. So when you find yourself being defensive, you need to really ask yourself why. Because what it comes down to is you're not ready to have an adult conversation. Yeah. You're, not really, you're not really ready to take on responsibility. When you can't take on responsibility in a situation, then there's not gonna be resolution because you're not gonna say, I'm sorry. They're not gonna say they're sorry. You're stuck. Right, and you're just gonna go around that mountain over and over again for years yeah. to come because it's just gonna keep resurfacing. Absolutely. And so I think on this first issue, always talk issues, someone said this a long time ago and I loved it. Um, be more concerned about getting it right instead of being right. Mm. Yeah. Some people, their whole life, I mean, they're just dedicated to being right. Yeah. I'm telling you, getting it right is more important than being right. And when it comes to marriage, when it comes to issues, then our, our, together, unity, let's get this right. So we're not, you know, rehashing this for the rest of our life. And so always talk issues. Um, hey, listen, there's something that'll bless your socks off that we want to that we want to give you. We want to sow into your life. It's a uh, it's called the Daily Move, and it's just a little email that comes every morning. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to read, but it'll bless you. It'll motivate you. It'll inspire you. It'll uh, encourage you. And once again, it's just free. And so check this out, and we'll be back in about 35 seconds. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Path TV. Again, we're Philip and Laura Baker, and uh, uh, we are talking about the art of arguing. Fighting. Part one. Fighting. <laughs> talking about fighting. Dis hey, whatever you want to use. Oh, we don't argue, we discuss. We discuss. Uh, well, hey, we don't discuss, we just fight. 
uh, you know, whatever, whatever terminology uh, you want to use. What we want is we want to make sure that solution comes out of it and uh, we're not just reinventing the wheel, you know, uh, through arguments for the rest of our life, yeah. going around the same mountain yeah. over and over yeah. and over again. And so the, the first dynamic that we talked about, uh, the first thought was uh, always stick with the issues, whether it's the underwear on the floor, or putting the toilet seat down, or finances, or sex, or children, or spiritual things, or house, or vehicle, and or, you know, someone, someone takes your keys and you can't find them because they, 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 they wind up in somebody's purse. Stick with the issues. Stick with the issues. Number two, the second thought is, is never attack each other personally. Yeah. Never attack the person. Mm -hmm. And so, let me give you an example. So we go back to focus on the issues. And so let's just use something silly. Uh, you know, underwear on the floor. Yeah, we and could so, use that one. And so, you, 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 you know, she comes in, she goes, man, why, why are you keeping your underwear on the floor? Stop putting your underwear on the floor. I'm tired of picking up the underwear on, your floor, on the floor. And so, okay, we have an issue. Okay, got an issue. Stick to the issue. Let, let's solve this. Let's figure out what we're going to do with those underwear moving forward. <laughs> but what happens in a marriage is sometimes we don't stick with the issues and you take it up a notch. And so instead of, my gosh, why don't you pick your underwear up off the floor? I'm tired of picking your underwear off the floor. Watch this. You go, what's wrong with you? Are you stupid? Uh -oh. Were you raised in a barn? Uh, uh, yeah. Are you stupid? <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you to pick your underwear up? Are you, are you ignorant? Can you not listen? Uh, do you not have a brain in your head? I mean, okay, now, now instead of sticking with the issues, now you're starting to attack the person personally. Yeah. You've ratcheted up a notch. And once you enter into that realm, a uh, solution is going to be very, very hard uh, to find because now you've made it personal. Mm -hmm. Now you've made it personal. And when you attack personal, then what's the natural reaction of the other person? Well, they're going to attack personal. And so now you're not in the realm of underwear anymore. No. Now you're fighting. You're calling each other names. And it's escalating. You know what it it's is. It's escalating. And now, all right, foop, you know, now, right. you know, now, now you don't, you don't hurt in each other's feelings. Right, absolutely. And, you know, what happens is, when you have, maybe, maybe you've said 50 times, 50 times, can you please pick your underwear up? Can you please pick your underwear up? And we're using that as a silly example, but you know, you say that, but on 51, you just, you've had enough. Mm -hmm. You've had enough. And so not only do you not need to attack the person personally, but if you feel like you're being attacked personally, then stop and say, am I not listening to what they've been saying? Mm -hmm. Because they don't usually, you don't usually hit the personal first. Hmm. You usually attack the issues. And if you're not being heard is when you ratchet it up. Right. When you're not being heard, you don't think that they are considerate of what you're saying or they're listening to what you're saying or they're willing to work on what you're saying. You don't see any progress in that area. Then, then you go, well, I will take it up a little bit and we'll see what something happens here. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're over and attacking, attacking them personally. Mm -hmm. And there are things, you know, we talk about words being so important. There are things that you say, they, they can't be taken back. I remember when we were uh, children's pastors and one of the, the uh, it was an object lesson. And the object lesson was to get a tube of toothpaste. And you take all the toothpaste out and you put it in a big bowl there. So you've got this pile of toothpaste. And then he, he'd call a kid up and he goes, okay, now put that toothpaste back in. And you've got a little kid looking going, well, you can't do that. Yeah. Brother Philip, you can't do that. You can't, you can't get that toothpaste back in. Okay, it's the same way with words. Once you start attacking the person, you can't get those words back. Yeah. Once you say you're stupid, once you say you're dumb, you're ignorant, you can't take those words back. And those words are there. You're right. And nothing, <clears throat> once, once you cross that line, the only thing that you can do is humbly sincerely apologize and not just apologize but make but let that person understand that you'll that you'll never say anything like that again
Mm -hmm. And the relationship is kind of stuck in that moment once you take it personal. Because if you don't sincerely apologize, mm -hmm. if you don't sincerely humble yourself. Then there's no resolution. If you don't sincerely say, okay, I'm never, listen, I'm just telling you, I'm never going to say anything like that again. I was wrong. I'm sorry then uh, you can't even get back to whatever the issue was right. because now that's the issue. Right. And that issue, you've, you've, you've made it very personal and uh, you got, you got, you got, you got bigger problems than underwear on the floor. Yes, you do. Amen? Amen. So number one, stick to the issues. Number two, never attack the person. And then number three is, if you do number three, You've, uh, you're on your way to maybe getting a divorce one day. This is, this is the step that you never want to touch. You never want to mess with. It's stick with the issues, never attack the person personally. But number three is never attack the relationship. Never attack the relationship. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Okay, let's, let's go back to underwear on the floor. So the issue is underwear on the floor. My gosh, can you please put, take your underwear up? I'm so tired of picking up your underwear. Issues. All right, talk about the issues all day long. Let's find a solution. It's all good. Don't attack the person. Hey, what's wrong with you? And I've told you a hundred times, don't pick, pick, please pick your underwear up off the floor. What's wrong with you? Are you stupid? Okay, don't do that, okay? But you can still ratchet it up even another step. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, but people do. So this is what they do. What's the matter with you? Are you stupid? My gosh, watch this. My gosh, I don't even know why I married you. Okay, now, now, you're, now you're attacking the marriage. I don't even know why I married you. You know, I'm starting to think it was a mistake that I married you. You know, I'm having regrets now that I married you. You know, I just don't know if I can be married to you any more. Oh, wow. Okay, there, there's so many different ways to say that, but what, 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 what's the common denominator? You're attacking the marriage. And once you get over into that realm... That's, ooh, the, you, that's the ultimate rejection. That is the ultimate rejection of a relationship. And when you do that ultimate rejection, when you throw out those words, you're, you're saying the word divorce. You're saying, yeah. I, I, I want out. You're, you're, you're ultimately saying, I never want to see you again. Yeah. I want to get to a place in my life where you're not even in my life. Yeah. You're, you're telling that person, I am thinking, I have been thinking about not wanting to be a part of this anymore. Yeah. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That was one of the things that we decided early in our marriage. And you know, we've done a lot of things right. We've done a lot of things wrong. This was one of the things we did right. And, you know, Philip just said when we, we were young, we, had, we, we got married pretty young. I was, you know, 12 or 13. I don't know. We were young. But Philip said, he goes, we are never going to let the word divorce come out of our mouth ever. We'll never say it. We're not ever going to say it because once you say it, you open up floodgates that, is, that are almost impossible to close. Yeah. Because you have, you have, you've let that word out. You have opened your home up to complete chaos. Yeah. Because it's total rejection of the relationship. It's total rejection of the commitment and the covenant vow you made between you and God and that person. Right. That's, that's right. Absolutely. And so always talk issues. Never attack the person. And my goodness, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, never attack the relationship. Don't ever let that word, that D word, that divorce word, don't, mm -hmm. don't, don't think it. Don't let it in your heart. Don't fantasize about it. Never use that word. Never attack the relationship. And uh, it, man, th those three, those three thoughts right there, you know, will save you from a, a lot of heartache moving forward. But we still got some good stuff. Still got some good stuff that we'll talk about in the next episode. But let me, let me just kind of finish out. You know, years ago somebody gave me a book, and it was by Dale Carnegie, and it was called uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And that book is, 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 you know, goes back a long time. It's, uh, it's got some really incredible Christian principles in it. It's been used by, you know, business and corporations because, you know, a lot of people don't have business, they don't have people skills. Right. And, you know, you can be, a, you can be so smart 
You could be so spiritual. You could be, you have such an intellect and such an IQ, but I tell you what, you're not going to make it very far if you don't have good people skills. That's right. And that's what that book is talking about. And, and that, that man, Dale Carnegie, he has an entire chapter about not arguing, about don't argue, don't argue. And this is what he says. He goes, when you get into an argument, he said, nothing good ever comes out of it. He said, because the one person is fortifying their position and the other person is fortifying their position and the more they argue the more they're fortifying each other's you know they're, they're fortifying their position and nothing good ever comes from it there's no resolution there's no solution he's saying uh, you know always avoid the argument and uh, and so someone said this a long time ago that kind of goes with that you can whip a skunk, but you might not want to. And there's something about arguing that just brings out the worst in you. It just makes things funky. And we need to, we need to learn how to transition from, come on, arguing and fighting to discussing things with the goal of having a solution. Mm -hmm. And so just want to remind you again, stick with the issues. You know, one of the ways, let me just say this real quick, you know, when you start to have a disagreement, an argument, one of the things that you want to say is, baby, I love you. We are on the same team. Now let's talk. Yeah. Amen. It's real simple. You start with love. You start with love. That's good. Hey, we hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode. And uh, we're going to continue on uh, in the next episode. We're going to have a part two. And keep kind of keep talking about this art of arguing. But again, thank you for joining us. Make sure to run over to our website and sign up for the daily move uh, and it'll be a real blessing to you check out our itinerary um, remember go over to our youtube channel and catch up on all the episodes and as always wherever you are in the world man we want to ask you to pray about partnering with philip baker ministries you can go to our website uh, click donate and there you can uh, you can partner with us and everywhere we go in the world, you go. Everything we do, you do. And you'll be a part of everything we're doing, and you'll be a part of helping The Path TV stream all over the world, because as we've talked about it before, there's a demonic attack on marriages and family, and uh, The Path TV is, we're endeavoring to do something about that. And so, uh, man, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, tune in to the next episode. We're going to continue part two on the art of arguing. Hey, God bless you. We'll see you next time on The Path.